This instructional video will give you information on how to use Fidelity.com as a resource to locate mutual funds and then uh, using the fund, the, using the, um, the site to make comparison of those funds. So what I want you to do, go to uh, www.fidelity.com, go under the News and Research tab to start with, and go down to Mutual Funds. What this will do is load the uh, database of mutual funds that um, have some characteristics that follow the search criteria. And you'll see that in this particular window, we have the option of making some selections of different funds that we may want to look for. Just by default, with this no transaction fee box checked, uh, Fidelity tracks 3,000 593 mutual funds. If I turn this radio button off, you'll see that there are actually 11,038 funds in the database. So that's obviously both situations more funds than we want to spend time looking for. So to start with, let's leave that turned on, which limits our number of funds available. Now there's two ways that we can do this. We can use the information on the left to select the type of a fund that we're looking for. Or we can choose criteria over on the right, which allows us to identify the stars, the returns that we're looking for, and the expense fees. Let's start out on the left to begin with. First of all, under asset classes, uh, most of the time when we're searching for a mutual fund, we'll probably be looking for a US equity fund. So I'm just gonna go down and choose US equity. Under the categories, <clears throat> categories would give us, all categories would give us all of the mutual funds in the database, or we could select from a particular asset class, which would be you know, large, mid cap, or small cap. And within each of those, there are categories that are growth, um, value, a blend would be a combination of, of um, bonds and stocks that would be combined into that mutual fund. With just all classes, uh, all categories selected in U.S. equities, we have 1,056 mutual funds. If we chose to, let's say, do large value, that would reduce that number to 166. Okay, so we have some narrowing criteria that we're able to use here that help us get a little bit more manageable kind of a search. If I wanted to have, let's say, mid cap value what i'm looking for there is a mutual fund that is mid size but value means it's on sale that result shows that now i'm down to 52 mutual funds and really i could take the time to go through that list and i could eliminate probably pretty quickly some of those so 52 makes that a little bit more reasonable kind of a search so if i do that i'm just going to show you the category here mid cap value and I'm going to go and I'm going to click see results. <clears throat> and it will come back with a list of the 52 mutual funds that match the results of that search. All right. And at the top of the screen, <clears throat> you'll see that the first one here is called Fidelity Midcap Value Fund. And if you go through the list, you'll see most of these are blue. Um, I have a couple of them here that are purple because I've launched those. I've actually looked at them. So that shows that that's been a fund that I've, I've spent some time looking at and viewing. All right. Um, then it goes down to the bottom. You'll see there's page one, page two, and page three that gives you the list of funds. But here's the information I want you to be familiar with. Across the top, it tells me the Morningstar category. Um, YTD is year-to-date performance. So this fund has returned 3.87% year-to-date. The one-year return has been 16.13%. The three-year has averaged 8%. The five-year has averaged 13.84, and the 10-year, 7.21. Okay. Next, we get our expense ratios. Now, expense fees are, are fees that the mutual fund builds into the price of the fund um, in order to pay for its existence, for its management, and for its um, facility, and for its mailing, and, and all of those kinds of things. All right. So 0.73%, that's about three quarters of a percent 
um, that's considered to be a relatively low um, expense ratio. Anything below one, I think, is acceptable. If it gets up above one percent, um, that that is becoming a little bit more expensive than what I think um, you need to pay based on the competition that's out there. Next, you'll see the star rating. Okay, Morningstar is a company that evaluates mutual funds, and five star is the best you can get. This happens to be a four-star fund, four out of five, with a low expense fee that shows a pretty good track record of returns. That might be a fund that I would be interested in taking a look at. So if I want to know more about this fund, I'm going to click on the name. <clears throat> and that's going to take me to a screen that's going to give me all kinds of information about this fund. Basically, this screen becomes somewhat of the fund prospectus. The prospectus tells you what the fund is all about. It gives you all the details about it. So as I go through and I look at this, it shows me here's the, here's the symbol in which this mutual fund trades because all mutual funds trade just like a stock. There's a symbol that's used to identify it. This particular fund belongs to a family of funds. The Fidelity family is the mutual fund family at is uh, partnered with. Fidelity is the number one mutual fund um, company in America as far as its size goes. And so they might have they might have a hundred different mutual funds that all have different criteria. This one is referred to as the mid cap value fund. When I look at some of the data, it's a four star rating. It's going to have a um, an average return with relatively low expenses. But the risk spectrum I'm looking at is it's a little higher than average. So I might have a little bit above average risk with average returns and low expense fees. But all of that combined leads us to have what we would consider to be a, a pretty reasonable fund. When I go down and look at my details, it's a mid-cap value. It's been around since 2001. The um, expense ratio is listed here. And then the price at which this fund trades, which is the NAV, that stands for net asset value. That's like the trading price that a stock would trade at. A mutual fund trades with something called an NAV. The turnover rate, this is, this is something that refers to how often companies are bought and sold out of this mutual fund. And this has a very high turnover rate. 83% would refer to this mutual fund as being a, an aggressively active managed fund okay active managed means there's a lot of buying and selling a passive manage would mean that they buy the companies and they sit on them for a period of time but if you remember the name of the fund it's a mid cap value so what that tells me is that the fund manager is buying and selling when the companies become overvalued they'll sell them and they'll take that money and buy something undervalued which would be considered a stock that might be on sale that would indicate that there's probably going to be a pretty high turnover rate. Um, if we wanted to get into this mutual fund, if you were going to buy this fund, it would cost you $2,500 to initially invest in it. So you'd have to start out with $2,500, which is not um, a terribly large amount of money, but there are funds out there that you can get into for less than that. But this particular one, um, $2,500 would be your initial investment that would be needed to set up this, this mutual fund. Over here is the list of the um, companies that it owns. Here's the top 10 companies. Some of these are, are probably names that you're not real familiar with. Um, American Tower, maybe a company you've heard of. They're in the cell phone um, tower business and uh, broadcast media business. They put up the towers for those, those kinds of facilities. But a lot of these other names, Ingersoll Rand is a company that's an industrial company. But these others in here, some of them you may not have, have heard of very often. But the, the mutual fund has 142 holdings. So when we talk about a mutual fund being diversified, this is showing us some diversification with having your money, your $2,500, spread over 142 different holdings in the fund. When you look at the returns, here was the same information was on the first page, the year to date, the one year, the three year, five and, and 10 year. Um, so it's, it's done a pretty good job in returning money for the investor. As we scroll down, this table is always kind of interesting because what it does is it shows 
a hypothetical $10,000 that would have been invested in this mutual fund um, a total of 10 years ago and where it would have grown today. The lines on here show this mutual fund in the blue. It shows the Russell mid-cap um, value fund, and then it just shows the mid-cap value as far as a, um, an index of all of the valued funds. And so this fund has um, just slightly underperformed the Russell mid-cap, but still it's done a pretty good job in that $10,000 has returned for the investor about $20,000. Okay, or just maybe slightly under. So that, that's been a pretty good return and it would be an investment from 2009 that um, you would be pretty happy if you, if you owned this fund. As we go a little further down, <clears throat> you'll see the um, information about the fund manager. Um, this um, Court Dignan is the manager of the fund that's been there since um, April of 2013. So we know that um, has been around for a few years, but is relatively new as far as a manager goes, and that can be a, an advantage or a disadvantage depending on how you look at it. Probably hasn't been through a lot of um, down market experience if they've only been managing since 2013, because since then it's, it's been an all uptrend. I like having a manager that maybe has been around a little longer to be able to um, know how to handle a situation like this. Here's where this manager started and it's, it's been a, a consistent uptrend for, for their experience with the fund. Here's the fund overview. The overview tells you what this fund is all about, how it makes its money, what its strategy is, and what its risk might be. And then down below gives us, again, some quarterly and averages and returns compared to some other indexes that might be followed. So this little screen gives you a lot of data about a fund that you might be interested in exploring and, and possibly um, investing real life money in. There's some other things that we can look at. You can click on the prospectus. That will take you to a more detailed document and, I, and I'd like you to, to take a look at that. And then there's a monthly fact sheet that's a PDF that would give you additional information on this as well. Um, there's a more tab that would give you more information um, in addition to what we're currently looking at. And again, um, some of this is a summary, some of this is new information. Um, it organizes it maybe just a little bit different. Um, there's some volatility measures. It gets into a little bit more um, analytical data that, that you might use in determining if this were actually the fund that you would want to buy. Okay, I'm going to take you back now to the, um, to the initial page that we started on. And I want to show you another way that you can use this tool. All right. <clears throat> First of all, if I know the mutual fund that, that I want to search for, if I know the name of that fund, um, let's say this was the mutual fund that I wanted. Okay. If I take this, this um, ticker symbol and I'm just going to copy this. Oops. Maybe I won't. FSMVX. I'm going to go back. FSMVX. I'm going to type that quote in up here on the quote screen, and I'm going to do a search for that fund. That will take me back to that same initial screen that we came from. So if you know the symbol, you can key it in up here and do the search directly to that fund. If you don't know the name of a mutual fund, and let's say you're new at it like we are now, you're going to need to do some, some searching. You can do the search criteria by this method over here, or we could use these options to do some additional kinds of searches. So let's just say that I'm looking for a mutual fund. I don't know what I want. I want a U.S. equity fund. But I don't know what category I want. I don't know what the best place would be to put my money today. So I want to search the large, the mid, and the small, and just give me a list of companies that, that might be good options for me. I definitely don't want to pay a, a transaction fee. That's like a broker fee to buy it. I don't want to pay an individual broker fee outside of the expenses that I have to. But I like finding a fund that I know is at least a four star. 
<clears throat> so I'm going to select four stars. I want my returns to be above average. Now notice when I did that, this number changed. Now I'm down to 291 funds. All of these, these categories now, it by, by choosing a different number up here, is going to eliminate funds from the criteria. Okay? I want a return that's above average. Now I'm down to 198. And I want the lowest expense fees available. Now my search has taken me down to 32 funds that match that criteria. So I can easily manage 32 funds. So let's see my results. And this is going to be a, a match of funds that are in all asset classes. Some will be small, some will be large, some will be a blend. And here's some of my results. Now you're going to see that Fidelity has a lot of hits. There's a lot of these that come back that are Fidelity funds. But here's one that's a State Street institutional. Um, that's telling me if it's institutional, it's probably going to take you know, a little bit of um, additional money to get into. If I go down the, the list, here's a Wells Fargo fund. Here's an Invesco S&P 500 index fund that's a large blend. So it gives me results that fall into um, a number of different asset classes, which I think can be beneficial. Again, just because it appears at the top of the list, don't always think that that's the absolute best fund. However, this one that's up here right now looks pretty impressive. It's a Fidelity NASDAQ composite index that's a large growth that has had some pretty phenomenal returns. If you were invested in this for 10 years, you would have averaged a 10% return over that 10-year period of time. It's a five-star rated fund, which is good as it gets, and it's in the large growth category. So this would be um, a, a company that trades on the probably the NASDAQ that's considered a large growth, but it's, a, it's an index, so it's going to probably have a number of different companies that it's going to follow. So let's click on this one, and let's take a look at what this is. And I'll be honest with you, this is the first time I've looked at this particular fund. Okay. So again, here's our, here's our breakdown of it. Um, five star, it has high returns with low expense fees with um, a little bit above average risk, but not too bad. But to get these kinds of returns that are shown over here, this is a pretty impressive mutual fund. And look at what it holds. It holds some of the biggest and the best companies in America. You have Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, I mean, you're looking at, at some really terrific companies here uh, with a fund that has, that has done very, very well. It's been around since 2003. It has an expense fee of 0.43%. It trades at $79.90. That's the net asset value. Look at the turnover rate. Notice the difference between this and the previous one that we looked at, 4%. So what that's telling me is that this is a passively managed mutual fund. This manager isn't doing a lot of buying and selling. They're just buying and they're holding over a period of time. And you can see the results the last 12 months. It's been as low as 60, as high as 79. Um, $2,500 is what it takes to get involved with this one. So if you wanted to open an account, you'd have to put in $2,500 to start with. This is a pretty impressive mutual fund with the returns and the companies that it holds. When I go down to my hypothetic growth again, you're going to see this trend in every mutual fund and every stock you look at. 2008 was a terrible year. 2009 is when we started the uptrend. But again, in 2009, if you would have put $10,000 into this mutual fund, um, you would have a return of in excess of twenty-five dollars You would have $26,300 that this mutual fund would have been, uh, would have been returned. So again, that's a, that's a pretty impressive return. Large growth in general, that's right here. Okay, so this mutual fund has outperformed the large growth category by about $6,000. So again, they're doing something right in, in this particular fund. Tenure of the manager, um, this is actually not an individual that's managing it. It's a, it's a team of managers, but that group has been together since 2003. Now, is that significant? Um, I think it is because they've been through this downtrend up here in this 2008, 2009. So they know what it's like to be hit in a, in a volatile market. 
So the experience that they show there, maybe I'd be a little bit more comfortable putting my money into um, a mutual fund like that. Here's the objective of what it does. Um, it describes how it evaluates companies and how they use their strategy. They, they invest 80% of their assets into stocks that are on the NASDAQ composite index. So of those five, 6,000 companies that make up the NASDAQ, 80% um, of the assets of this fund are going into that particular investment. You know, if I go back um, to my list here, you'll notice that here's the top 10 holdings, but this fund has 2,233 holdings as of the end of March. So when we talk about diversification, this is very diversified. You're spreading out your risk over a, a very large number of companies. Okay, going back to, um, again, the overview, it talks a little bit about the risk, and then it shows some comparisons of how this index fund has compared to the rest of um, the, the funds in its class. So again, here's a mutual fund that's done pretty well. And I think it's had some, it's had some pretty good returns that an investor would be happy investing their money in. And that's why when we talk about in class, your serious money, if you are, are not able to spend a lot of time picking individual stocks, you're, sometimes your best opportunity for gains might be in a mutual fund. Okay, so I'm going to have an assignment for you to do some research using this tool, and I want you to identify a mutual fund that you think would be a good fund to invest in using either of the search criteria that I've just demonstrated to you. You can't use either of the two funds that I just explained. You need to find a, a different fund. Um, and I want you to do some research and come up with, um, it'll either be one or it will be two. I haven't decided exactly which assignment I'll give you yet. You're going you're to do one for sure. So for today, let's start out. Use this tool. Let's find one mutual fund that you think would be a good one to invest real money into. And then fill out the, um, the prospectus assignment that the sub will hand out to you. And um, that, that should be completed, and hopefully we'll get that done here today.